Thank you, Riley. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is Donna Valente, Senior Grants Manager at the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. And you are listening to the Technical Assistance Webinar, Applying for a Reeve Foundation Second Cycle 2018 Direct Effect Quality of Life Grant. Introduction. The Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation Quality of Life Grants Program created by the late Dana Reeve, has awarded since its inception in 1997 a total of over $24 million to 3,032 projects across the United States of America and in many countries. Quality of Life grants are currently funded through the Reeve Foundation's cooperative agreement with the United States Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Community Living. The most important thing that I'd like for you to get out of today's presentation, and if you're listening to this at a later date and can't listen to the whole presentation, is to please read the application guidelines and the information that's provided on the website. You'll want to go to www.christopherreeve.org then Get Support, then Grants for Nonprofits, and Application Process. And there you'll find information about the program and the process, and you'll be able to download the application guidelines, a helpful document called People First Language Guide, another helpful document, Quick Guide for Establishing Evaluation Indicators, a list of all the application questions, and the required proposed project budget template. In 2018, the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation adopted a tiered grants structure for the Quality of Life Grants Program. And there are two types of grant tiers, the direct effect tier, and that's what we're talking about today, is open and focused. The maximum, the maximum award was $15,000. It is now $25,000. And these grants support the same wide range of programs and services as were funded in past quality of life grants. The other tier is high impact priority grants. These grants focus on specific high priority issues for the community of people living with paralysis and their families. These grants have increasing grant dollar amount levels for high priority tiers. The 2018 second cycle direct effect quality of life tier, again, is open focused. Grants are up to $25,000. The letter of intent is not required for this grant tier and we will require a proposed project budget template. I will be repeating these uh, series of instructions and details throughout the webinar because they are important and they are um, something you'll need to keep in mind. Just a little bit about our high impact priority tiers. They will be offered again in the first cycle of 2019 and they include a $50,000 grant for employment, $40,000 grants for nursing home transition, and $30,000 grants for transportation, respite and caregiving, and disaster response. And new in 2019, some topics that we will be adding will be youth transition, opioid prevention education, addiction management, and we will also be offering an expanded effect tier. Again, these will be offered again in the first cycle of 2019. Now we'll do a little bit of a program overview. The Quality of Life grants fund nonprofits, tribal entities, and municipalities for a wide array of projects, programs, and services. The Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation is paralysis-focused 
and as such, our grant funding must be targeted to projects that will serve individuals living with paralysis and their families. I'd like to give you our definition of paralysis. The Reeve Foundation uses a functional definition of paralysis, and this is similar to what's used by the World Health Organization. Difficulty and or inability to use arms and or legs due to neurological conditions, including but not limited to spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, stroke, cerebral palsy, spina bifida, ALS, post-polio syndrome, transverse myelitis, multiple sclerosis, and other conditions. While we will consider supporter, supporting programs that include people that have other types of disabilities, cross-disability organizations, as well as inclusive community projects that aren't targeted for individuals with paralysis or other disabilities but want to be inclusive, ReFoundation Quality of Life Grants projects must serve at least three individuals with paralysis as defined above and or their families and caregivers. What is a successful ReFoundation grant? A successful ReFoundation Quality of Life grant is a modest award invested into a very specific project or part of a program or project that directly impacts the lives of people with paralysis and their families. Impact can be demonstrated through numbers of people served and other quantitative measures, along with stories and examples of quality of life improvement. Who can apply? Quality of life grant applications are accepted from nonprofit organizations, municipalities, and tribal entities. Who can't apply? Applications cannot be accepted from organizations outside of the United States of America, for profit companies, and individuals. Individuals seeking financial assistance are encouraged to contact the Information Specialist Team at the Christopher and Dana Reeve Paralysis Resource Center. The 800 number is 800-539-7309, and you should ask to speak with an Information Specialist. Prior grantees. Organizations that have received one or more quality of life grants in any category or program in the past are eligible to reapply two years after the most recent grant award. Earlier this year, we had lifted that restriction on prior grantees waiting to reapply uh, because everything was brand new with the piloted programs. This time, we are reinstating that. So, grantees from the second cycle, 2016, and further back are eligible to reapply this grant cycle. If you were awarded in the first cycle of 2017, you will be re-eligible to apply in the first cycle of 2019, so two years after that last grant. What kind of projects are funded? The Direct Effect Quality of Life grants fund the same wide range of project categories that were funded in the past. It's quite a list. I'll, I'll just run down them, and you'll see these again. Uh, adaptive sports, accessible playgrounds and ball fields, accessible treehouse, assistive technology, advocacy, arts, camp, caregiving, consumer education, durable medical equipment, education, employment, facility accessibility modifications, fitness and wellness, healthcare, 
home accessibility modifications, media development, medical professional education, physical or occupational therapy, peer mentoring and support, service animal program, therapeutic horseback riding, transportation, and transition from institution to home. What kind of projects can't be funded? Quality, quality of life grants cannot support prototypes for invention of equipment or other research and development activities that have to do with intellectual property. Fundraising events or paid fundraiser positions. Lobbying and or efforts to influence legislation. Projects that will serve less than three individuals with paralysis and or their families. Projects that cannot be completed within 12 months of receipt of the grant award. Or projects that have already been completed. What expenses can we fund? Quality of life grant funds can support equipment, supplies, programmatic personnel, programmatic consultants or contracted workers, entry fees, programmatic transportation and travel, facility rental, project marketing, and other expenses. All budget items should directly relate to the proposed project. Personnel costs directly related to the proposed project may be funded and should be essential to the project. Programmatic expenses directly, excuse me, directly related to serving individuals with paralysis and their families are considered more favorable than operational expenses and or large capital projects that may take more than 12 months. What kinds of expenses can't we fund? Reef Foundation Quality of Life grants cannot support the following. Grants awarded directly to individuals, and again, we ask you to please contact our information specialist team at one 800 5 we cannot fund food. Uh, we cannot fund food if it's called food or meals or per diem or board or lunch or dinner or breakfast. Anything that's food, we cannot fund and we urge you not to put it on your project budget. Um, if you put it on there, um, it's just not going to look good, uh, we can't fund it, we'll have to remove it if we do fund you. And uh, since we do state it several times, um, it's important not to include food. We cannot fund construction, new construction of buildings. Although we may support construction of playgrounds, trails, and accessibility modifications to existing structures. So when you're talking about construction of a playground, uh, the kinds of expenses we would fund in a playground um, would be installing a particular piece of equipment or a ramp structure or something like that, um, but it's not construction of a new building, so that is acceptable. Um, we cannot fund for-profit organizations, again. Uh, we cannot fund indirect costs above 10%, and that's also considered administrative overhead expenses. A little bit more about indirect costs. Indirect costs, also called facilities and administration, should only be included under other costs by organizations that require them for all granted projects, for example, universities and large hospital systems at their federally negotiated rate. So if your organization does not require that all grants have a portion of indirect costs included in that project budget, please don't include it. 
including indirect costs in the project budget for organizations that don't require facilities and administration will lower the applicant score. Multiple submissions. Organizations may submit one application in a grant cycle. This, again, is different from what we had done earlier in this year. Um, we had that more open because everything was new. We're going back to one submission per organization. Multiple submissions in a grant cycle are not permitted. Special consideration. Special consideration will be given to projects that target the following underserved population groups. Current military and or veterans and their families, persons at risk of incarceration, and current or released prisoners, ethnic minorities, homeless, indigenous or tribal communities, LGBTQ, limited English proficiency, rural residents, low income and or poverty populations, and newly injured people with paralysis and their caregivers. And back to our second cycle 2018 quality of life grant application for the direct effect tier one. Again, it is a wide open focus and the maximum award is $25,000. Some examples of funded projects in the direct effect tier are sports wheelchairs for a wheelchair basketball team, an adapted glider in a community playground, a kayak for a rowing program, accessible lockers at a gym, wheelchair accessible picnic tables at a county fairground, camp scholarships, subsidized lessons for therapeutic horseback riding, transportation costs, for inclusive after-school after programs and stipends for support group facilitators. Those are just a few examples of the kinds of programs funded with a direct effect grant. These awards are expected to have a short to medium range impact. Long range impact and sustainability are not expected. And these grants, again, should be completed within 12 months after the grant is awarded. Letters of intent, again, letters of intent are not required before submitting a full application for a direct effect quality of life grant. Okay, now we're gonna jump right into the application questions. I'm gonna go through every question and we'll talk a little bit about the budget. So the first question, um, and this should tell you if you should proceed or not with your application. The first question is paralysis focus. We confirm that the proposed project will serve individuals with paralysis and their families. That's a yes or no question. If you answer no, it most likely means that you, this application that you're attempting is not a fit for our program. Project information. Project name, please give your project a name. Project type, and this will go back to our list of project categories that we went over before. You should choose the one that's closest to your proposed project. So I'll read through them again. Adaptive sports, accessible playground or ball field, accessible treehouse, assistive technology, advocacy, arts, camp, caregiving, consumer education, durable medical equipment, education, employment, facility accessibility modifications, fitness and wellness, health care, home accessibility modifications, media development, medical professional education, physical or occupational therapy, peer mentoring and support, service animal program, therapeutic horseback riding, transportation, transition from institution to home. Next, we want to learn where did you learn about this grant opportunity? 
and we ask you to choose one, Facebook ad, prior grantee, word of mouth, the Foundation Center, or other. If you choose other, um, please explain. And then we'll go into the organizational information. We would like to know your mission statement, the official mission statement for your organization. This should be three paragraphs or less. We do give character counts, or I'm sorry, uh, paragraph suggestions. Um, we do want to keep them concise. Uh, we often get several hundred applications. So um, the mission statement is usually a set uh, couple of paragraphs. It should not go over three. We would like to know the description of your organization's history and capacity. Please briefly describe your organization's history and its capacity to do the proposed project. We do a lot of work with Centers for Independent Living and we would like to know if your organization is a center for independent living. So we would ask you to please choose one of the following, that your organization is a center for independent living, that it's an agency for centers of independent living, or that it is neither a center for independent living or an agency for centers of independent living. It's helpful for us to track this information and to be able to, to pull it to report to uh, the Administration for Community Living. We would like to know the approximate size of your organization. So we asked you for the total annual operating budget of your organization. This should be in U.S. dollars. And this is the organization's total expenses for the current year. We also want to know if you've applied to the ReFoundation in the past. So we would ask you to please choose one, either a previously requested ReFoundation Quality of Life grant, you previous, previously received a ReFoundation Quality of Life grant, you're a first time applicant, or you don't know. The project description is next. We would like you to please provide a short description of the proposed project, including who will benefit, what your organization wants to do and why, where and when it will take place, and how it will be done. Numbers served, how many people affected by paralysis will benefit from the project? This number includes people living with paralysis, members of their household, and their caregivers. We would also like to know the age group or groups of participants that you will be serving. And we'd ask you to check all that apply, from 0 to 4 years old, 5 to 12 years old, 3 to 18 years old, 19 to 24 years old, 25 to 45 years old, 46 to 60, and 61 to 90 plus years old. And then we ask you to choose any of the underserved targeted populations that your project may serve. And these include, again, current or released prisoners and or persons at risk of incarceration, ethnic minorities, homeless, indigenous or tribal communities, LGBTQ, limited English proficiency, low income and or poverty populations, migrant workers, military service members and or veterans, rural residents, and newly injured people with paralysis and their caregivers, survivors of violence or other if you choose other, uh, we leave you room to describe what that other population is. And also, something that we like to track is if your organization is considered a medically underserved area or population. The Health and Resources Services Administration, HRSA, defines medically underserved areas, MUAs, 
and medically underserved populations, MUPs, as geographic areas and populations with a lack of access to primary care services. Please choose one answer for each of the two questions below. The first one is, application organization is a MUA or MUP. Application is not a MUA or MUP or do not know if applicant organization is MUA or MUP. The second part of this question is the designation. If your organization is either an MUA or an MUP, please tell us the designation. If your organization is not an MUA or MUP, or if you do not know, please enter NA. Project timeline. Grants are expected to be completed within a 12-month period. We'd like you to enter the start date, and this is a, a date field, based on the expected receipt of the grant funds, and the project end date, and that's based on the 12-month grant period. If your proposed project will not take 12 months, you can enter the proposed end date here. Proposed project activities and benchmarks. Please provide a timeline of major project acti activities, including proposed start dates, benchmarks, and end dates. Um, in this answer, we would like you to provide a little bit more detail of um, what exactly you're doing and when those parts of the project will start and be completed. Budget information. Here we would like you to enter the total budget, the total proposed project budget amount. So that if your budget is more than you're requesting, um, whatever it is, that's what we want you to enter here. And then we want you to enter the amount requested from the Reeve Foundation. Both of these fields should be in US dollars. For the amount requested from the Reeve Foundation, uh, the maximum grant award, again, is uh, $25,000. Project contingency funding. Please tell us how funding requested from this Reeve Foundation grant fits with your overall project budget strategy. If other project funding is pending and subsequently denied, how will the project be funded? What happens if the refoundation is not able to support the proposed project? We do have a required attachment of a proposed project budget template. Uh, this was a requirement for many years in the last cycle, in, in the first cycle of 2018. Uh, I tried to streamline the process by incorporating the budget template right into the application so there wouldn't be a required attachment, uh, but we found that it made it much more difficult in the review process uh, to have to go back and forth in the applications to pull out the budget information. So um, at the reviewer's request, we're going back to um, requiring that project budget template, and hopefully it will make things easier for you to provide information that we're looking for. So this project budget template is a two-page Excel template. I'll show you a picture of it on the next slide. Um, in the first part of that budget, uh, there will be space to enter other project funding grouped by revenue, revenue type. I'll go into that into, in the next slide. Um, it also, the, the template includes formulas that calculate the subtotal for each category so that it automatically fills the budget summary at the end of the form. Um, so the summary of the total funds requested on the template must equal what you've entered for the refoundation requested amount. So if it differs, 
you'll know that something was filled out wrong and you're going to have to make an adjustment before you submit. If you fail to submit this template, unfortunately, it's an automatic decline. Uh, we get so many requests that um, if you're not, if you don't follow that rule, that it, it's just an automatic decline. Um, the good thing is if you apply earlier, early enough, I did have one application that came in very early, did not submit this required attachment, I had to decline, but they will have enough time to reapply if they choose with the corrected budget. Okay, this slide shows, I know it's very hard to read, but it's small to try to fit the whole um, side, both sides on the page. Um, that's what the first and second page looks like. Um, it is a two-page template, um, but let's go to the next slide so you can read it better. This slide shows the top of the first page. You'll see, and I apologize that it's small, but you can, you can read it. Um, the first section is other sources of funding. So you'll see the first column, there are different types of revenue. So we have internal funds, individuals, foundations, corporations, uh, federal government funds, and state government funds, and then other. So you can put a total for each of those categories, if it's applicable, in the dollar amount cells, um, and then tell us if the, that other funding is committed or if it's pending. Um, so that gives us a little bit informa more information about other potential funders for, for your project. The next section is personnel, and uh, the column on the left is the person's name. Um, and then you have a what that person's role um, and the activities of that employee in the project are, how much time he or she will be um, spent on the project, and then we'll have a you have a total um, in for each of that each person listed under personnel, and then um, total personnel funds requested goes in the last box, and that carries over to the summary. The bottom of the first page includes the equipment section and the consultants and contractors section. Um, in this presentation, I'm showing you what the blank template looks like. The application guidelines has examples for every section, um, what it would look like if that's filled in and how we want that information shown. The top of the second page is uh, for supplies and then travel. And then the bottom of the second page includes other costs. And then you'll see the summary of funds requested from the Reef Foundation. Um, if you don't have an expense in a particular category, you can just leave it blank. Uh, those subtotals in each of the categories will uh, come down into the summary and it will auto um, total. And again, the total funds requested um, that shows at the bottom of this form should equal what you've um, put in for the amount requested from the Reed Foundation. Okay. Next, I want to show you what we don't want to see. This is an example of a budget that um, came in, but it was not. It was not in addition to the template, it was instead of. So I did mean to decline, and um, so hopefully this applicant will want to come in again with, a, with the correct budget. And I did change the name of the applicant. Um, but I wanted to point out a few things on here. Um, if you look down one, two, three, under food, you'll see food is included for $12,000. That, of course, you know we can't fund food so that should not be there. Um, the total request, I believe, for this one was, was 15,000. Um, what it would have been much more helpful would be if out of this budget, uh, the applicant could have pulled um, 
the $15,000 that was requested from the Reef Foundation and put that into the budget. Also, another thing on, on this one was that the total project budget, 250000 that was different than was entered in the actual application for the total project budget. So there are a few things there. Um, another thing that we don't want to see is even if you do submit the template correctly, please don't upload a copy of your organizational budget unless it's absolutely germane to your project and we need to see that to make a decision. Uh, but I recently reviewed uh, an application that was submitted and they uploaded an Excel spreadsheet and it in, ended up making the application over 100 pages in what was submitted with the attachments because there were many, many blank pages that got uploaded in that huge Excel document. So um, only send things that can be reviewed um, and that makes sense. Uh, we don't want it. More is not better in this case. Um, you should only upload things that are um, essential to our understanding of the grant. Okay, um, about application mechanics. Um, to, all the applications have to be submitted online, so you'll want to go to our website. Um, that's www.christopherreeve.org. Click on Get Support funding for nonprofits. Um, you can either click right on that page to apply for a quality of life grant. That will get you to the logon page or you can scroll down a little further onto the application process page. Click that for more information and then you'll get that whole page that lists all of the helpful information that we want you to read before applying. And you'll see the link that says apply for a quality of life grant. That takes you to the portal, which looks like this. Again, it's a little bit hard to read, but um, you'll get uh, a space to enter your email address. For new applicants, you'll want to click on create new account and then follow the directions um, to fill out your organizational information. And then once you do that, um, you'll be able to click on apply here to get into the grant. Prior applicants, if you've already applied and you're in our system, then just enter your password and log on. If you forget your password, there is a forget your password help link that you can click on. So um, this slide shows, it's, it, again, it's hard to read, but once you're in there, if, you're, if you need to do this to apply, um, you'll go in and you'll see um, all the information that's needed to start your organization's account um, and then create a password. And then you'll be able to see where you click on apply. It will let you enter the Second Cycle 2018 Direct Effect application. And for returning applicants, um, when you sign into your account, you'll see the grant opportunity listed and you'll want to click on Apply and it will bring you to the application page. The review criteria, criteria for this grant are found in the application guidelines. Again, I urge you to read the application guidelines for the details on all aspects of the application process including the review criteria. Every question is explained in great detail in the application guidelines with sample budget details for each budget section. I'd like to um, go ahead and open up for questions and answers. Um, this, this concludes my part of the presentation, but I know there are a lot of questions um, so I'd love to hear them. And I'm going to go in into the system and read what has come in. I also have questions that were submitted in advance of this webinar that I'll, I'll address as well. Uh, the first one that I see is when does this cycle open? Um, it is open. It opened on um, Christopher Reeve's birthday, September 25th. Um, the deadline is October 31st.
Again, all of the questions um, will be answered either live in this presentation or afterwards if I don't get to your question. We will be reviewing all of them, aggregating similar questions, and answering them in a document that will be available on the website. And this presentation is being recorded as well and will be archived and available on the website. Um, it should be available hopefully by the end of this week. Um, a question I see here, will grants support equipment that helps individuals with paralysis in a clinical rehabilitation setting? Yes. We have done that before and we, we will continue to do that. Does the Reef Foundation favor funding equipment or personnel costs if they are both essential to the project? For example, funding the cost of a van to transport individuals with paralysis into the community or funding the cost of the salaries required to support individuals. Okay, so um, we can fund either of those costs. As far as um, me suggesting which one is better, um, that's something that I, I really um, am not able to do. They're both valid expenses, um, so we could, we could do both of them if, the, if those are within that $25,000 max. This grant appears more driven to tangible items um, or supporting programming such as facilities, instructors, stipends, and scholarships. Um, that is correct. Um, the, the grants should have a direct impact on individuals living with paralysis, so it's a direct and obvious uh, logical um, benefit for individuals with paralysis. So. Uh, sports wheelchairs or um, assistive technology, computer equipment, um, th those would be very concrete items that, that serve individuals with paralysis. What if your project type covers more than one type? Um, that I'm sure happens a lot. Uh, we would ask you to choose the type that most closely matches what your project is. Um, if we feel that it belongs better in a, in a category, um, the way that, that Reeve places things, we can make that switch. Um, as long as you choose one, that's what we're looking for. Um, are there character limits for responses? Um, we have suggestions on paragraph uh, limits. We don't have hard and fast uh, character limits at this point. Um, I try to make it very generous um, as far as um, limits for responses. Um, but again, a lot of times less is more. We want you to be succinct and clear and straightforward in what you're asking. So it's easier if, um, if you are more concise than if we have to read through a lot of text to figure out what it is you're trying to do. Um, for the numbers of people served, we are looking for individuals with paralysis, so that is the number that we're looking for. Um, and the number of people benefiting only in one program year. Um, if your equipment grants are going to benefit people longer than one year, you can estimate how, like for the life of that piece of equipment and how many people it will benefit. Um, we do not know the targeted population yet, but we are a municipal, we are municipality, but we feel all groups could be served. Um, 
What we're really looking for with this question is, does your project seek to specific, specifically serve any of those groups of underserved populations? Um, we have had organizations choose all of them if they think all will be served. Um, that's fine. You can put none of these. I believe that's a choice as well. So if you want, if you feel that your project will serve all of those subgroups, you can indicate that. For the initial focus question, is it possible to choose a primary and second purpose? Um, we are looking for. Now I'm um, okay. For the initial focus question, is it possible to choose a primary and second purpose? For purposes of this grant, our project is a park and will include educational components. Uh, for example, companion animal training. Um, for okay, I see what you're you're saying. I would. This is also going back to the project categories. So choose the one that you think is the primary focus that would be best for that answer. Um, donations in kind, um, that can be handled um, You can in the other uh, funders. If you want to put it under um, individuals, um, you can give an estimated amount, uh, but you can also talk about that in the narrative um, portion, if that's something that's, that's uh, very important in your grant. Um, for example, that labor costs are being um, donated in kind, then uh, you can tell us that in the in the narrative part of the application. And, uh, that's another in kind contributions on. Um, the way that this form is set up, um, it, it's looking for a dollar amount in that second column. Um, if you do have an in-kind contribution, I believe that if you type into the field where it says either individuals or foundations, you can you can um, type. I believe you can type in-kind there. Um, I think it'll let you do that, but you can also explain that in your narrative. Um, for the other sources and amounts, we are looking for. Uh, for specifically for that proposed project. We are requesting funding to make a newly renovated facility accessible. Do you want a budget for the entire renovation project or a budget for making the facility accessible? We are looking for the budget for making the facility accessible. We do not want to see the entire project budget. And here's another question um, around that same thing. Do I understand correctly that you do not want to see detail of project expenses that will not be funded by the Reef Foundation, even if they are essential to the project budget? Um, We don't need to see the detail. We don't need to see that project detail. You can explain uh, or you can list the other funding in those areas, but we don't need to know um, all of that detail for, the, for what you're not looking for from Reeve. If we applied last cycle and were declined, does it make sense to apply again for the same request? Um, you can certainly apply again for the same request if you're confident that your proposed project is a fit. Um, and this brings me to another question. A lot of people that applied in the last cycle or previous cycles and were declined want feedback on why they were declined. Unfortunately, we're not able to provide individual feedback um, in many cases, it was simply that there was not, um, we didn't have the program dollars available to fund all of the fabulous requests that came in. We had to decline many. Um, so there isn't uh, a set of steps that I can give to applicants to say if you do A, B, and C um, or change 
X, Y, and Z in what you proposed last time, that will mean, yes, you can get funded. Um, it is highly competitive because we get far more applications than we can fund. So if you are looking for something that you can strengthen, I would suggest that you look at your application and then compare it with the guidelines and see where you may have um, submitted something that was not quite what we were looking for in the budget categories or um, perhaps some of the detail that was provided. Uh, just make sure that you are providing the information that we're asking um, and that, our, that you're as clear as possible um, and that what you're doing is aligning with the guidelines. And that's my best advice for, for previously declined projects. Um, if you applied uh, last cycle and you were declined, you do not need to wait again. Uh, are we only accepting direct effect grants this cycle? Yes. Uh, this is for direct effect grants up to $25,000. Again, the high impact grants will be offered again in the first cycle of 2019. When are the applications due? Um, they are due on October 31st. Um, the first cycle, two thousand. another question, do you know what the first cycle 2019 direct effect deadline is at? I do have a calendar. Um, we will be opening it in mid-February, and the deadline is I believe it is March 15th, but I actually don't have that. Unfortunately, I don't have that part of the calendar in front of me, um, but it should be, I believe we have a, a four-week window. So I believe it would be the end of, I think it's mid-March. Please don't quote me on that. I ha I'll have to get back and um, confirm that deadline for the next cycle, first cycle 2019. But for this cycle, second cycle 2018, it's October 31st. Oh, here's a great question. Are proposals either fully funded at the requested amount or not funded at all, or does the foundation sometimes decide to fund a project at a lower amount than requested? Um, in most cases, we would like to fully fund um, at the requested amount, um, but we like to leave it open that if we need to negotiate something, uh, if there's a cost in there that the reviewers are not comfortable um, and I don't even want to mention this because I don't want to encourage anybody to include a, a cost that's not acceptable, but um, we have had some great applications that include food. If that were the case, we would not be able to include the food portion, even if we want to fund the rest of it. Um, so I would be very uh, careful on what you include in your project budget to make sure that all of the funding um, elements of the proposed application are acceptable. Uh, we will try to, again, to reiterate, we will try to fund at the requested amount, um, but it is possible that um, we may need to renegotiate that uh, requested amount. So um, that used to be more um, common that we would fund uh, we would actually strategically fund um, at a lesser amount so that we could provide more grants, but now we're trying to do more requests at full funding. How far back are your records maintained for prior grant recipients? Uh, we have records going all the way back to 1997. So um, not to say that I can guarantee every single record is complete, but we, are, uh, we make every effort to have complete records. If you received a grant in the past, can you submit an application for the same program or would you prefer a different program? Uh, we do not have a restriction against funding the same kind of program that was funded before. Um, we do like to fund expansion um, of programs. 
um, and we like to fund new programs, but it doesn't mean that we will not fund um, something that's been funded in the past, especially if it's something that worked very well. Um, so that, uh, I don't know if we would necessarily prefer a different program. That, it's really a case-by-case -case situation uh, for each organization. Uh, can we resubmit proposals submitted but declined in 2018? Um, you can resubmit a, a proposal that you had declined in 2018, but I would encourage you to make sure that you uh, study the guidelines and make sure that you are following them, and of course that you update um, any of the information as far as uh, funding that might be committed instead of pending, or, or other kinds of um, activities that may have happened with this proposed project since the last time that you applied. When will award determination be announced? Um, we would like to notify all applicants by December 21st, so it's in advance of the, the December holidays, and that will be an email notification whether or not you've, you're awarded. Um, okay, I have two questions. The first is, how do you find newly injured? Um, that, for, for our purposes, is um, up to a year out, even closely um, to that number could be included as newly injured. Can we include staff salaries and equipment directly related to the project as committed internal funding? Yes. The next cycle, the next cycle will open in mid-February. Um, can respite care be covered with the direct effect grant? Uh, yes, it can, but it is not at the $30,000 level that it is in the high impact grant. It would be $25,000 at the max. Does therapeutic riding equal hippotherapy? Yes, uh, we include hippotherapy when we're talking about therapeutic horseback riding. Um, are the budget Excel sheets in the grant application to be downloaded? Uh, yes, the, the budget um, template that we want you to fill out, um, it's available in several spots. You can download it from, directly from the website. Uh, you can link to it in the online application itself, that you can click on a link and download it. Uh, you will need to complete it and then upload it in the project budget upload button. Uh, can tribal government submit an application? Yes. Um, where would camp scholarships be listed on the budget template? That I would list under other. What kind of grants will you not accept? Um, we, cannot, um, we cannot do grants to individuals. We cannot fund for profits. We cannot fund organizations outside of the United States. And we also cannot fund work that's going to be done outside of the United States, even if the organization is based in the United States. Um, the first cycle grant for this year, our charity applied and did not receive the grant. Do I indicate that? Um, yes, you can indicate that you applied for a grant. How many grants do you anticipate making? Um, with our current level of funding, um, if we fund at the maximum level of 25000 we can make 21 grants of $25,000. Um, usually, we fund requests um, that aren't, we don't get all of our requests at that high uh, maximum level. A lot of times we get uh, grant request amounts for less than that, so that number could very well be higher than 21 at 25,000 each.
Okay, and then we have a question about timeline and project budgets for equipment. Can you include personnel costs that will be using the piece of equipment for one year? Um, you can include equipment costs and personnel costs that are related to that project for the year. Um, okay. I sent an LOI in April but have not heard anything back. Uh, all of our applicants were notified, so perhaps the email, if you did not hear anything, especially from an LOI, you can consider um, that it's, it was not funded, you will be eligible to apply. Okay, you said completed projects are not eligible, but can we include things already completed in preparation for the main project, such as grout repair done in prep for installation on top of a flagstone surface? If you have already done something um, in the project prior to applying, we do not want you to include that in what you're requesting for us. It, the, the grants should not be budget relieving, so you should be requesting funds for activities that have not yet occurred. Um, will we make this presentation available that we can share it with our colleagues? Yes, it will be. The entire presentation will be recorded and archived and available on the website. Um, we, I also have slides available that I'd be happy to send. If we are building a new accessible bathroom with an overhead lift system, what portion of that project is eligible? The lift system would be eligible. Uh, if you're doing uh, roll under sinks, um, automatic door openers, all of those parts of the project would be eligible. Since the foundation's funding source for the Quality of Life grants is federal, are there any restrictions regarding use of funds that we should keep in mind if a project will occur in a federal facility? For example, an arts program serving veterans with paralysis at a VA medical center. Um, well, we, we would not want you to include um, project or um, budget items that we're not able to fund, uh, and those are all listed. Food, we can't fund. Um, we don't want to. We we can't fund indirect costs unless it's a federally negotiated facilities and administration cost that your organization mandates for all grants. Um, food is the the main the main thing in your case. Uh, we cannot do grants to individuals. But an arts program serving vets um, with paralysis at a VA medical center, that is absolutely within the funding paradigm for this program. For building an inclusive playground, would you entertain funding the seven wheelchair accessible ramps, or would it be better to be a standalone piece of equipment like a wheelchair accessible merry-go-round? Um, in this situation, it, it's really up to you. Um, if you have a funder that you think is is really um, going to be very um, receptive to funding either the ramps or the merry-go-round, definitely go with that. Um, we the Reef Foundation would fund either of those two expenses, either the ramps or the merry-go-round. Is it better to focus on a specific program or all programs, fall, winter, spring, and summer? I would say in most cases it's better to focus on a specific program. However, if you're going to be requesting, for example, sports wheelchairs for sports programs and those programs will be run throughout the year, um, for, if it's equipment for all the programs, you can you can ask for equipment for the year round programs. Um, if it's something like uh, coaches or facility rental, I think you'd be better focusing on a specific program. 
do equine expenses for a therapeutic riding program go under other expenses? I would say in most cases, yes. Um, please keep in mind, we cannot fund food, even if it's food for horses. So we can fund veterinary care um, and equipment, um, but we can't fund food. And it should go under other. We are submitting a project to have a disabilities conference. This was funded by the Reef Foundation for our last conference in 2016. Most of the expense is meals provided by the hotel. If meals are not allowable as a fundable expense, is it possible to make an exception for a conference? Unfortunately, we are not able to fund food, even if it's an expense that's incurred um, at a conference. I would look at your project budget and see if there's any other way that you can frame a request that does not include food. Uh, for example, you might want to do scholarships um, for attendees, uh, trans accessible transportation, or stipends, um, perhaps for, um, for caregivers, um, but we cannot fund food, so uh, please don't include that. Can we apply for physical rehab programs for local spinal cord uh, gyms rehabs? I would say yes. Regarding the question about age of individuals served by our program, if we have a program for children, do we only consider the age of the children or also the age of their parents who will be positively affected by the program? In this case, I would say we are looking to learn about the age of the, the children. And you can talk about how the program will also positively affect the parents, but I. I think for ages served, we're really looking for, for the kids, the age of the kids that you're going to be serving. I operate a lending closet for durable medical equipment and have two locations to safely transport equipment for people with paralysis to borrow. A cargo van is needed. Is that something that could be funded through this direct effect grant? I would say yes, although I am a thinking it probably would be more than the $25,000 um, that's the maximum for this grant. So I would um, encourage you to uh, demonstrate that you are going to seek other funding for this project. We are a 501c3 that uses the 10% indirect costs and is required to apply it to all grants, projects, et cetera but we are not a large hospital. Okay, if, you, if your organization is required to include it, then you can include it. And you can explain in, that, in the other detail cell um, that that's the case. Uh, would training to use assistive technology be an acceptable, acceptable ask? Yes. We have three-tiered funding support, which includes helping to build a hovercraft adaptable for individuals living with paralysis. Is multiple projects allowed? Okay, this one has me puzzled because it says you're wanting to build a hover, hoover hovercraft. We cannot fund research and development. We cannot fund anything to do with intellectual property um, or uh, development of prototypes or beta testing. So I hope that answers your question. Um, is multiple projects allowed? Uh, we really want you to focus on, on one project um, unless, as I talked about before, you're um, requesting support for equipment that's going to be used over over several projects. A veteran serving organization has started a health and wellness program and desires to have a space within their facility to house this program. 
can a portion of the ask go toward facility costs? Um, if this, if the facility costs are essential to running the project, um, and you need to include rental, then I would say yes, we we could you could include that. Um, next, we are a municipality that received a grant two years ago for beach wheelchairs. We would be asking for matting that is placed on the sand so individuals can get to the beach. Uh, would we put this as an add-on to the original proposal, or is it okay to put in as a new proposal? I would say um, this should be a new proposal, and you can talk about how it is expanding on um, what was funded before in funding the beach wheelchairs. And you can talk about how wonderful the beach wheelchairs have improved accessibility and how the mats would, would improve it even more. When you ask if the organization is a, an MUA or MUP, does this mean the organization serves um, MUA or MUP, um, we would want to know, yes, if, you're, if your organization is located in either a medically underserved area or medically underserved populations. Um, if your organization is in, um, included in that, um, we, definitely, we would want to know that. And if it is, it, it should have an official designation that you can find on, on HRSA. If you don't know, then you can just put don't know. Can we request adaptive equipment for snow sports program and water sports paddling program? Yes, you can. When will you accept the next round of applications? Our next round will open in February, and that will be for direct effect grants which is this program, as well as our high-impact grants. Can we request both a lift for our PATH Certified Therapeutic Writing Center plus the salary of the instructor teaching with it, um, as long as it stays within the 25000 uh, yes, as long as you're under the 25000 you can request support for both of those things. Are we allowed to resubmit proposals that were sub submitted during the first funding cycle? Uh, yes, you are allowed, uh, but again, please make sure that all of the information is up to date. If we regularly serve those newly injured, can this grant help cover the cost of that? Um, if this is an ongoing service, we are a SIL. Um, absolutely, we, um, we would certainly be able to, to um, have a direct effect grant help cover the costs for serving individual, individuals that are newly injured. Um, so yes, and please tell us, please let us know that you're a SIL. Does the foundation look more favorably on proposals that have matching funds? Uh, we do not require a match for, for this quality of life grant, the, the direct effect grant. Um, if you demonstrate that your project does have other funders, it is a stronger application than a project that has no other potential support than the REEF Foundation. If you're looking to other funders, um, it, it shows us that, uh, that you're working at other sources besides the REEF Foundation, that you're not um, hanging all your hopes on, on REEF Foundation funding. Um, it, again, it is very competitive, and we would encourage you to, to seek other funding as well. Would it be fair to say that an all-inclusive playground would meet the needs of all those listed on the criteria? I would say it's possible that it would serve all of those.
Okay, currently no one with limited mobility can access our site, so current particip participation from those groups is zero. Our goal is to become accessible to them. How do we estimate the number affected? Um, well, I would think if you're doing a, a project um, that you would uh, you would do some kind of feasibility study or needs assessment to know that there are indeed individuals that do want to access your site. So you can go to um, the resource um, desk at your local library and um, tell them that that's what you're you're looking at. Um, how you can get an estimate of number that will numbers of people that will be affected. Um, you you can you can estimate using information that you get from those sources. Okay, we have multiple adaptive sports programs that serve people with paralysis, skiing, fly fishing camp, paddling, fitness. Um, okay, I'm not seeing the question, um, but you can request support for one of those programs or choose um, all of them, um, I'm not really sure what your, your question is. You can either choose a specific one or request something that is applicable to all of them. Uh, we are in a very rural area. How do I find out if we are actually designated um, an official underserved area or population? Uh, you can go to um, the HRSA website and actually put in your zip code and uh, it will find that designation for you. Will ReFoundation help renovate existing clinical areas to newly renovated ADA areas? Uh, for example, excessive, accessible shower rooms need renovation due to wear and tear. Um, Yes, we, we, we can consider a grant to help renovate existing clinical areas to update the, the ADA um, accessibility. We provide adaptive hand cycles and tricycles to children. These last for a number of years and have a positive effect on the child and average of four others in the family and caregivers. Is this a reasonable response to the number of people served question? Yes, um, that question I believe is a numeric field, so we will want you to put a number in that. And if you wanted to say that the number of people listed as numbers to be served comprises, and then you can, you can put that sentence in about an average of four others in the family to get that total. Would a nonprofit nursing home residents in wheelchairs fit your criteria for paralysis? Yes. Is it better to submit a grant for a unique need versus something more common that others request? For example, you get 10 organizations all looking for new vans. That, I have to say, will be up to you. If a van is something that you're, you have the greatest need for, then I would submit for the van. Um, then again, we're always looking to fund new and innovative things. So if you have something that you feel is unique and serves individuals with paralysis, especially if it's something that is new either in the field or for your organization, we, we would like to hear about it. How do you calculate personnel wages? Um, well, how do you calculate personnel wages? That is something that's going to have to come from your organizational budget. Uh, when will the funds be allocated? The funds will be allocated um, early January. Will the foundation help with a larger van, such as a 12-passenger van, for an independent living home that has standard seats also?
I would say we could sit, we could consider that, yes. So that there's some wheelchair seating and some non-wheelchair seating. Yes. We have a packet of research studies on a piece of equipment for which, which we are seeking funding. Does it help to provide the packet for optional reading or would the, this not assist in the overall proposal success? I would say include it in the um, optional information button. You can, um, I, I would scan it all into one document and upload that um, unless it's many, many pages. Um, you might want to consider including a link to the to the website um, for more information on that. I don't know if we're actually going to want to look at research studies. If you have maybe summaries of research study, that might be um, more desirable for our reviewers. How do we come up with the number of people served if you are a park without full-time staff? Uh, again, for this question, I would suggest that you uh, contact your resource department at your local library and tell them the kinds of information that um, you're being asked to provide, and they can help you estimate that. Again, the time frames, the funds will be available. Uh, the funds will go out in early January. Again, we'll be making notifications at the end of December, hopefully by the 21st. Uh, we'll notify all applicants by email. Um, if there's a change to your organizational information after you have um, input the information for your organization, uh, you won't be able to make that change yourself. So please send us an email at qol at christopherreeve.org and let us know what you need to be changed in your account and we'll make that change for you. Uh, the same also goes if you've submitted your application and then you realize, oh my goodness, I put in the wrong amount or I put in the wrong number of people served or something that you want to change afterwards, let us know by emailing qol at christopherreeve.org and we'll try to make that update for you. Okay, um, if the fundraising for the all-inclusive playground project is being done by a volunteer com community committee and is a standalone project, but the city is providing the vehicle to collect and receive the funds, do you want to see the total annual operating budget for just the playground project or the overall city annual city operating budget? Please do not send the overall annual city operating budget. We do not need to see that and it's going to be too much. So um, for the project budget, we want to see what you will be requesting from the Reeve Foundation. Um, and then as far as the total amount, you can put the total amount to build the playground, but we do not need the operating budget for the playground committee. We need to see that um, just the number, the total um, amount for the project, and then uh, the details for what you would be requesting from the Reef Foundation is what we're looking for in the project budget template. We wish to seek funding to install sunshades at our preschool playground. Uh, while all of our children are vulnerable to sun and heat exposure, our special needs population are particularly susceptible to the effects of the sun. Um, let's see, we're getting to the question. Is this part of the application? Oh, Does this project align? Yes, absolutely. We funded sunshades in our last grant cycle. Um, so yes. Um, this web, the website talks about the ABCs of quality of life. Is this part of the application? Um, thank you, Roberta, for, for picking up on that. Um, we like to talk about the ABCs of quality of life when we're talking about the kinds of programs that our grants fund, um, but we don't need to consider it 
in the application process. That's something that we look at the grants and then decide where they fall, but that's after the awards are made. It's not something that you need to, to think about or include in your application. Again, when do you expect to send award notifications and checks? We're hoping to notify everyone by email by December 21st, and we're hoping to get the grants out um, in early January. Would a program where social workers work with people on employment, vocational training, and related resources be appropriate? Um, I would say it, it certainly could fit. Um, the direct effect grants span the wide array of programs, so you can focus on employment um, or other uh, types of projects without necessarily applying for a high impact grant. It, you can still focus on employment without it being that $50,000 high impact grant. Um, of course, it should be something that's not at the scale that we would expect in a high impact grant, um, but you can certainly apply for employment related and vocational training related expenses in a direct effect grant. Um, <clears throat> so no projects can begin until after 123118. Um, the official start date for uh, the timeline of this project will be starting after the, the grant awards are awarded, and that would be mid-January. So I would put, to be on the safe side, I would begin the projects in mid-January 2019. If you have a project that you're asking Reef Foundation to help fund, if your project is slated to start in November, you don't have to hold it up until you find out whether or not you've been funding. Um, you can certainly run your project, and then if the Reef Foundation funding will help support this project, that part of the, the funding will affect what happens January and forward. If we are notified of awarded pending funds from other funders after we submit our application, but before the Reef Foundation announces awards, should we notify you? Yes, please do. And we can use that as um, when we're reviewing the grants internally. And if that's something that can help tip the scales to something that's more likely to be funded and carried out, uh, it is important to know. So yes, please let us know. We have pledges being paid in installments. Should we show that as two separate lines? Oh, oh that's a complicated one. Um, I would say that it's committed. Because even though you haven't gotten both installments, it is something that you're expecting. It's not like you're waiting to, to learn whether or not it's going to be funded. You know it's going to be funded. You're just getting paid into installments. So I would consider that one source. Can you clarify internal funds on the budget sheet? Um, if you have a project um, that you're requesting funds from Re Foundation, your organization is also committing funds to that. Um, that's what we're looking for. It do, you don't need to specify every single expense um, or every single dollar. Um, you can estimate um, the amount, um, but we don't have any set and fast descriptions of internal funds. Um, we just want to know if your organization is also committing funds to the project. Is there a minimum amount that can be applied for? Uh, we do not have a hard and fast rule on a minute, minimum amount, um, but I would think that you would want to make it at least $1,000 to make it worth your time to apply. Uh, can we apply for two different projects in the same year? For example, a fitness program and a national adaptive sports conference. 
Um, you can apply for two, two different projects in the same year. If you apply in one cycle and are not funded, you can come in in the next year and apply for that same project in the following cycle. Uh, but if you get in a if you get awarded for a fitness program, and then the next cycle you want to apply for your national adaptive sports conference, we would not be able to consider that second request until two years after you've gotten that award. So if you want to apply for two different projects in one direct effect application. If the total that you're requesting from Reeve Foundation is 25,000 or less, that's a possibility. Of, I mean, those are both; those would both be acceptable. Um, but we couldn't we couldn't consider two different requests in the same year if the first request was funded. Do reviewers try to distribute grant awards based on geography so that grants aren't concentrated in the same geographic areas? Uh, yes, we do try to distribute the grant awards. We, we don't want to have a cluster of awards in, in one region. Um, we do look at if, if there are a lot of uh, applications um, in one spot, we're going to try to break it up. And we actually, we have a running count by state when we're reviewing the grants internally. So we try to make sure that uh, the grants are, aren't clustered in one area and in one program area. We try to, to make it so that uh, we have representation in each of the areas. Okay, what would happen if we applied to you and at the end were approved for a specific piece of playground, playground equipment and during the time we were waiting to hear from the Reeves Foundation whether or not we were approved, another donor offered to sponsor that piece of playground equipment. Could the grant funds be used for a different piece of wheelchair accessible equipment on the playground? Um, if we award funding for a merry-go-round and another foundation says we're going to fund the merry-go-round, if you're already, if we've already committed to funding your playground, please let us know as soon as possible that that request needs to be adjusted because um, we're going to want to know what other piece of equipment or other um, potential uh, piece of that project that we can fund. So if there's any change in the scope of what you've proposed after you've been um, accepted for funding, then we definitely need to know that right away. Um, we are a park with our own budget. Do we use our own budget or the township budget because we are under the township? Um, we would want to see the total budget amount um, for the park. Um, and then the, if you're requesting a piece of, I'm not exactly sure what you're going to look to fund in that park, um, but that the project, the project total, I would think from reading the question, uh, the project total is part of the budget for the park. So in both cases, we don't want the entire budget. We don't want the township budget. We don't want the entire park budget. We want the project budget for what you're coming to Reed Foundation for. Can large equipment such as a cargo van be purchased and or budgeted for used equipment or does it have to be new? Um, it does not have to be new. If you find a, an excellent used cargo van, um, it, that's acceptable. Can other funders be discounts from equipment vendors? Um, that is more like an in-kind donation. Um, you can discuss that in the narrative that you're working with vendors to get discounted equipment. Um, not, not technically an other funder. Um, so 
but you can certainly talk about discounts that you're working with uh, vendors to, to get for your program. If we are partnering, partnering with another organization which is providing some of the services, should we list their expenses under consultants' contractors? Or, for example, if they have personnel costs, do we list that under personnel? Um, you should only list in the project budget those funds that you're asking Reeve Foundation to help fund. So if, you, if part of your partnership with that other organization is to um, get the provision of some services and you're paying them as part of that agreement, that should be listed under either other or um, consultants, contractors, depending on the kind of, of um, support that they're providing. Um, but we would not want to see a partner's personnel costs listed under the personnel for uh, the applicant organization if they were not, in fact, part of that applicant organization. Uh, the, there will be a webinar for the high impact grants um, when those grants are offered in February. We are opening a child care center for newborns to six years of age. Our list of applicants is huge and includes two kids that have paralysis. Our project is still in need of appropriate playground equipment. Would the Reef Foundation potentially fund the total cost of the playground equipment of 20000 even though our project is also serving kids without disabilities? Uh, you could certainly request funding for, for the entire playground, even though only a few kids, it looks like, have paralysis. Um, I would like you to, um, to look at, at the definition of paralysis that we had in the, in the beginning of the presentation. It's very broad, and there might be more students, um, more, more children, babies, um, that are living with paralysis that you might not even be thinking as um, being considered as having paralysis. The application asks for total operating budget for the organization. I work for an outpatient rehab office that's an arm of a community hospital. And the hospital is part of a larger organization owning several. Which operating budget do you want? Um, the purpose, first of all, of, of asking the, the number, the budget number, is that we can get an idea of the size of your organization. So if, it's a, if it has all volunteer staff and, and no organizational budget, that's important to know. Or if it's a huge organization, that's important to know. Um, for the purposes of this grant, when you're talking about all those different layers, um, it would be fine for you to put um, the expenses for the rehab, outpatient rehab office. That's an arm of the hospital. That would be fine. Um, would attaching reference letters help? Uh, if you want to combine letters of support into one document and upload them, that would be fine. Um, it, it, you don't get extra points. For having them, or you don't get uh, you don't get uh, demoted points uh, or less points if you don't have them. Um, but they are helpful sometimes to get us um, a little get, give us a little bit more understanding of what your organization does and how it's working in the community. I have a question from someone who joined late. Will the slides be available? Yes, they will. Um, should I should the start date be January 1st, 2019 at the earliest? I would say yes. Um, what kind of recognition does the foundation especially appreciate? Um, we love being mentioned in um, in tweets and in Facebook, um, we'll give you language that you can use if you want suggested um, acknowledgement 
sentences about how, how you want the grant referenced, we, we will send all of that out. We also have, um, it's a, a template press release that we send to all of the grantees um, that has a fill in the blank of, of my organization received a blank um, a quality of life grant in, grant in the in the amount of blank, and then you put in your uh, project name, and then fill in what your project is funding, um, and then you can send that out. We have a memo that that helps um, helps you spread awareness about your grant, and and talks about getting lists of media and and sending them out to different outlets. And we have logos. We have decals and stickers and patches and all kinds of things that can help you let people know about the grant. If creating an adaptive playground will serve about 100 children with disabilities each year and the years of use is endless, then how do you guesstimate the number of people uh, it helps? Um, I, Jennifer, I would make a, a, a best guess and, um, and enter that. I operate a one-and-a-half-year-old nonprofit focused on accessible gardening and horticulture therapy programs for people of all abilities, including spinal cord and brain injury. Would the grant cover materials and supplies for creating accessible gardens for individuals with spinal cord injury, as well as the professional hours to work one-on-one -on -one with these individuals? Uh, yes. Yes, we have funded uh, accessible gardening before, and um, we would love to do that again. Um, so I think both of those expenses would be eligible. Can we apply twice in the same cycle? No. How would you like volunteers identified in the budget? Uh, we don't really need you to list volunteers in the budget. If you have a huge team of dedicated volunteers that you want to talk to us about and, and um, let us know that you have, then you could certainly include that in the project description or in um, the, where it has the, the benchmark and activities and timelines. You can talk about um, the outreach with your volunteers. Will all of these questions and answers be included on the recording that is posted on the website and in the document you are going to send around to everyone? Um, I will answer all of the questions um, if I'm getting uh, repeat questions, frequently asked questions, I'm going to aggregate those and answer them by question type. So if you don't see your exact question addressed, um, it will be addressed in uh, related questions. Where will the answers to the questions be posted? Um, I'll be, again, I'll be creating a uh, question and answer document over the next couple of days to pull together all the questions that were submitted beforehand, all of these questions uh, that I'm answering now and others that might come in to the QOL at ChristopherReeve.org email address. Um, we'll be pulling them all together, creating a document, and that's going to be posted on that same application information page that you'll find the other documents, the list of questions, the guidelines, the budget form, that's where you're going to see that listed. Okay, I um, just have time for a couple more questions. Uh, we have a peer mentor program for the new injured, newly injured and offer these services each year. Can this grant help cover the cost of that? It is not a new project but part of our existing programs, we are a SIL. Um, yes, um, we love to fund SILs, um, and we would certainly consider your ongoing peer mentor program. 
would you like to see funds we have received for the overall project budget? They would not be used for the specific piece of playground equipment for which we are requesting funding help from Reeves, but would illustrate the level of support for a broader project. If you have a list um, that's short, that's not hundreds of pages, um, that you would like us to see because you feel it helps demonstrate the community support for your project, I would say yes, you can include that. Um, but I would list it as, as other sources of funding and, and try to keep it brief. Uh, we really don't have the um, capacity to look at applications that are hundreds of pages long. Okay, and, and I appreciate you all staying for quite a bit longer. Um, there, are, there were quite a lot of questions. Um, again, if you would like to submit other questions, please email me at qol at christopherreeve.org. Um, I'll try to make sure that every question gets answered. And I appreciate everybody's um, understanding in um, the fact that we have to provide the technical assistance as a group um, in order to be fair to everybody. Um, so I certainly appreciate everyone's attention and time and um, really look forward to, to reading your applications. Um, I'll wait a few more minutes if, if any other questions come in. Okay, I have a question uh, about um, if you have multiple grant proposals from individual regional offices for similar projects from one national organization, are they in competition with each other? Yes, they are in competition with each other. So for example, if we have, uh, I'm going to use the example of MDA camps, summer camps. Um, they're, they're all amazing and wonderful camps. Um, however, if we have individual requests for a summer camp program from individual chapters, um, they will be competing with each other. Um, so that, that's the way the, the program works at this point. Is the decision first come, first served? No, um, it is not. Um, you, you will have, one thing about applying very early is that if there's something that is not fundable, um, for example, the organization that applied and did not submit the project budget, um, I had to decline them, but they applied early enough that they can submit again with the project budget template attached, and then they will be considered. Um, but we don't consider the applications on a first come, first serve. Um, that's not how the decisions are made. We review um, every application uh, in several review stages. The first stage is our external review panel. We have a panel of experts um, that we send the applications out to them. They have specific criteria, and those are listed in the application guidelines. Um, the applications are scored, and the scores are returned to our office here. And then all of those 
um, data points are collated, and then we have an internal review process within the foundation. Um, so those those um, applications are reviewed again um, using the the scores from the external reviewers uh, as a guideline in the review process. So yeah, it's definitely not first come first serve. Every application is reviewed on its own merit. Again, thank you all very much for your kind attention, and we look forward to your application. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude today's call. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect. Thanks, Riley.